Good morning, and welcome to worship with First English Baptist Church. And thank you, Carolyn. That was beautiful. Carolyn's playing for us this morning. Uh, Steve is still recovering from his back surgery, but doing well. And uh, Christina and Bella are going to sing for us today. Travis is doing the sound and the audio, the, the uh, video, and Annie's here too. To, we'll also be uh, beginning our, our in-sanctuary worship on this Sunday, and we will continue, hopefully, for the next uh, indefinite period. We are going to be uh, wearing masks and social distancing as we did in the fall. So if you are in our area um, and would like to experience in-sanctuary worship with us, with a few modifications, uh, we welcome you to come and uh, the service is at 925. We will take your temperature at the door. We will have ask everyone to wear masks and social distance, and we won't have the live musicians or congregational singing. So it'll be different, but uh, still, it will be an opportunity to be together. So we invite you to join us if you're able. We begin our worship with the singing bowl as a meditation with a prelude and a time of of quiet and reflection, we do that as we take a, a breath together and we meditate on God as the living breath, the spirit of God, the wind of God that animates and creates everything that is. So I'll invite you in just a moment to join me. And of course, we breathe all the time, but we don't usually synchronize our breathing. So in this particular instance, you can join me and as we inhale together, I encourage you to think about it as God's breath, God's wind of life, of inspiration, vitality, calm and peace, of nourishment, of love, of kindness and grace, of patience, all those spiritual resources that we need. And as you exhale with me, letting go of that breath to move to the next one, imagine letting go of those things that burden you today, whether they be physical pains, uh, emotional, spiritual pain, um, sorrows, disappointments, whatever 
bothers you today that needs to be released so that you may worship. Imagine letting that go. And then we'll join together in a prayer of invocation and response and move into the rest of our worship. So once again, thank you for joining us this morning. And if you'll easily exhale, please join me now in one deep breath of life. Gracious and loving Heavenly Father, thank you for that breath, for every breath that you give to us, and for this new day that you have awakened us to. We thank you for the opportunity to worship, to worship together with others, perhaps not in the same physical space, but in the same spiritual space. And we thank you that distance of time and place has no bearing on worship, that we participate together as we come before you. We thank you for the strength of life and health that we have today to be able to participate in this worship, and we pray that our thoughts and minds would focus on it as we move together through scripture and song and silence and prayer and the word preached. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to be together and to be drawn to you. Hear us now, O God, in a moment of silent prayer as we come together before your throne of grace. Lord, prepare us to be our sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving will be our living sanctuary for you. Amen. This 
this rebel heart belongs to you. Oh, take my life and let it be yours. Oh, take my life and let it be yours. Once again, I want to thank you for your continued support and uh, encouragement of our ministry through your giving. If you care to support us in this way, uh, we'll receive checks at our, at our church office, 700 Millville Road, Bloomsburg, PA, 17815, First English Baptist Church. And we do appreciate very much uh, how our members and, and others beyond our own membership have been supporting the church through this pandemic time. Uh, hopefully we'll move soon back into full swing in person. We're starting in that direction, but uh, thank you for your patience in this, in this difficult time. Would you join me as we offer a prayer of thanksgiving to God for God's graciousness to us all? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the many ways you shower our lives with the gifts and needs that we, that we utilize every day. We thank you, Lord, that you are faithful and that we are recipients of your grace beyond what we can count or measure. Thank you, too, for the opportunities you give us to share with others, whether it be this church or other um, venues of service and, and ministry. We are grateful that you move among us to support and encourage all who are in need. Help us in these days to continue to uh, be aware of the needs that surround us, both near and far, and to respond to your, to your call to participate in the ministry of the Word in the world. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness to us and your guidance in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I've retrieved the names from the Facebook page of people who we would like to pray for today, and I'll ask if any of you have names to add. We can certainly do that, too. These are the ones that we have been given for today. Alan, Steve, Joan... Karen, Ella and Joe, Mark and Sheila, Thelma, Holly, Dr. Kelly, Rosa, Jim, Arlene, Amber, Hunter, Callista, Jeanette, Linda, Tammy, Nana, Joe, Travis, Christina, Madison, Bella, Russ, Eleanor and Ralph, Ray and Judy, Shar and Dave. Uh, others today. Madison Taylor, and Kendra. Madison, Taylor, and Kendra. Yes. No? Okay. All right. I'm sure that you have some 
yourselves on your minds and hearts this morning. We will include those folks as we pray together. So would you join me as we bow together in prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to pray and to pray with others. We confess we do not pray enough and we are not mindful enough of the power of prayer. But we do thank you that you hear us where two or three are gathered, even when we are alone. Um, you are attentive to our cries and our needs. We present to you those that I have named out loud, but there are also others on our hearts and minds unnamed that we present to you as well and pray that in this day and in this coming week and time ahead that you would bless each of these with the encouragement and the healing and the strength and the hope and the love that they need. We don't know all the circumstances that they face, but you do. And we ask, O oh God, that in the midst of the struggle that they face or the needs that are, have arisen, they will sense and know your power and your love beside them and with them. We pray for our our church, for the churches of our area, for the people of our area who struggle in these times. And we, we ask that you continue to shower mercy upon us. We pray especially for those afflicted with illness and disease, um, some life-threatening. We pray for their doctors and nurses and all the medical teams at work, particularly those who are working even more than ever because of the pandemic that we have experienced, that we are still experiencing. We thank you for those researchers and technicians and doctors and scientists who have diligently been working to provide vac vaccines that are effective against the COVID-19. And we ask that you continue to empower those with the responsibility to distribute and um, pass along all of the, the vaccinations to those in need. We pray as well, not only for our country, but for the countries of the world, as this involves everyone and impacts especially profoundly those with less resources. Help us, O oh Lord, to continue to be mindful of the least among us and to focus attention and energy and resources to those in greatest need. We also pray for the personnel of our community who continue to work diligently to keep us well and to keep uh, our economy and our, our world actually functioning. Those in delivery systems, the, those in nonprofit organizations, in schools, in nursing homes, um, the businesses that have been affected, and ordinary people who struggle with home life, with children receiving their education, and parents receiving care. We confess that it is a difficult time, and we ask for continued hope and encouragement as we, as we work together to serve one another and to serve your purposes in the world. Help us, O oh God, as we struggle forward. May we be mindful that we are not alone, that you surround us with love and grace through others, through persons of faith, and through resources beyond measure. Thank you, Lord, for our church family and for the many ways that we can stay connected and together we pray for safety as we gather once again and for safety of other houses of worship as they move towards more in-person activity. Hear us now, O Lord, as we remember together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our first scripture this morning is from the Old Testament, the book of Isaiah. And this is the 11th chapter of Isaiah, beginning at verse 1, reading through verse 6. Hear the word of the Lord. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of power, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes, nor decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips, he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will lie down with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat. The calf and the lion and the yearling together. And a little child will lead them. May God bless the hearing and the living of this word. This past Wednesday, I officiated a graveside memorial service for Robert, Bobby, Gary, Brooking. His sister, Donna Lemon, is a member, along with her husband, Terry, of our church, And she asked on behalf of her family if I might conduct Bobby's service, which I was glad to do. In fact, I was honored and delighted to be asked. I first met Bobby years ago when I was asked to conduct funeral services for his mother in 2005 and then for his father in 2008. I can't say that I got to know Bobby well, But Bobby Brooking was unforgettable for anyone who met him. Donna and Bobby are part of a large, loving Brooking family, and Charlie Brooking is also a relative, well-known in Bloomsburg. But Bobby was unique. Allow me to read to you the public obituary for Bobby Brooking. Unlike most obituaries, which are simple facts and milestones of a person's life, Bobby's obituary captures well his singular personality and legacy to all who knew and loved him. And so here it is. Robert Bobby Gary Brooking, 79, passed away on Tuesday, February 16, 2021 under the expert and compassionate care of the angels on earth at Highlands Healthcare in Laporte. Bobby was born in the Bloomsburg Hospital on March 23, 1941, the third child of the late John Jr. and Lucille Millard Brooking. Bobby was well known in the Bloomsburg area, having once been dubbed Bloomsburg's number one fan by the Bloomsburg High School yearbook. He loved attending sporting events at both the Bloomsburg High School and Bloomsburg University levels, as well as the various sports games of his family members. For many years, Bobby's favorite mode of transportation was his bicycle, and he was often seen biking to carnivals, street fairs, and just about any social gathering. 
he rode his bike to the Bloomsburg swimming pool every day, beginning the day the pool opened in 1955. Many years later, when his advancing age no longer allowed him to pedal to the pool, he either walked or was transported by one of his siblings or friends. Bobby attended and graduated from the Fernville Special Education School during the 1950s and 60s. While there, he made many friends, most notably beloved school nurse Joan Kyle, whom he honestly adored. And speaking of honesty, Bobby was just not capable of telling a lie or gossiping against anyone. His nature was to accept everyone he met with true, Christian, open, and honest, heartfelt love and a big smile. Those who had the good fortune of being born on March 23rd would forever become Bobby's birthday girl or boy. There was never a lack of conversation on his part, and he wanted to know all about you. You married? Kids? Where do you work? What school do you go to? And most of all, how old are you? If you were younger than him, he'd say, I got you beat. After the Inquisition, you would become his friend forever. Bobby attended the Nazarene Church on 7th Street in Bloomsburg regularly and was very upset when it closed. Eventually, he found a new church family at the Trinity United Church of Christ and was ecstatic when that congregation purchased and moved into the former Nazarene Church building on 7th Street. His favorite hymns were, How Great Thou Art and Jesus Loves Me. He had complete faith in God. When he learned of a death or other unfortunate circumstance to someone he knew, he would point skyward and say, I can't help it, he's the boss. He thoroughly enjoyed his mother's and his brother's Rick, brother Rick's cooking. Among Bobby's favorite foods were Lebanon bologna sandwiches with ketchup, or his own specialty, burned hot dogs. Add some honey barbecue chips and top it off with chocolate cake and peanut butter icing, and he was a happy guy. He loved the Phillies and was blessed with good friends and family who took him to many games over the years. Bobby was predeceased by his mother in 2005, his father in 2008, his two older brothers, John III, in 1951, and Carl in 1998. He survived by his two little brothers and eight sisters. The Brooking family wishes to extend heartfelt thanks to the many wonderful people who enriched Bobby's life with their presence and caring. It truly does take a village. To say Bobby will be missed is an understatement. We take comfort in knowing that God has opened his arms and welcomed him home. Matthew 18, verses 3 and 4. Verily I say to you, says Jesus, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Seems to fit Bobby to a T. Amen. Bobby's obituary includes, appropriately, one of the most beautiful, most profound, and most ignored of Jesus' remarkable teachings. His love of and high regard for children. Children, in fact, are rarely mentioned as a cohort or as significant actors in the Bible. So their inclusion in gospel stories about Jesus is significant. Because of his attention to them, the gospel writers include children. Matthew chapter 18 is prominent among these instances. Matthew places this teaching soon after Jesus descends with Peter, James, and John from the Mount of Transfiguration. Here it is in Matthew 18. 
At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a little child and had him stand among them, and he said, I tell you the truth, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes a little child like this in my name welcomes me. The same episode appears in Mark's gospel, chapter 9. And Mark places it immediately after Jesus walking with his disciples to Capernaum and overhearing their argument between themselves as to which of them is the greatest. Even Jesus' disciples, humble as they all are, have to have a pecking order. Who's up? Who's down? Who's smartest? Who's humblest? Who's closest to Jesus? Who's most courageous? Human nature hasn't changed much in 2,000 years, has it? What are the metrics today? Who has the most followers on Instagram? Who has the hippest TikTok? What college did you graduate from? How many grandchildren do you have? Who has the newest phone? who has the fastest time, the most property, the largest bank account. Even churches get infected with this superiority virus. The most members, the biggest outreach, the greatest youth program, the most dollars given to missions, the most likes on Facebook. How do we fall for this stuff? Jesus wants nothing to do with such metrics. The whole idea of jockeying for the best place, the highest position, however the world might define that, is offensive and off-putting to Jesus. Which the disciples well know because they become quiet when he asks them, he already knows, what they'd been arguing about on the road. Instead of rebuking them directly, though, Jesus finds a little child nearby, perhaps peeking around the corner of a building, watching them pass. He calls the child over to stand among them. Life in the ancient Near East in the time of Jesus is a gauntlet of life-threatening challenges for everyone. But one could argue that the most vulnerable of all are the children. Infant mortality could reach 30%. Of those who survived infancy, another three in 10 would not live to age six. By age 16, another three of every 10 live births had died. There are recent studies suggesting that in excess of 70% of children would have lost one or both parents before reaching age 12 or 13. In times of war, famine, pestilence, disease, and invasion, all very common in antiquity, children then, like today, suffer most in fatalities, illness, suffering, and loss. And children, as children, have little social status in the family or the village. Their value depends upon their becoming adults to care for others in the family and to reproduce successfully. Therefore, when Jesus presents an anonymous village child perhaps even an orphan, as a role model to his disciples, he does not refer to the child's cuteness, playfulness, or carefree lifestyle, what we today associate with childhood, but with their utter vulnerability, dependency, and humility in their world. The disciples look the other way. Very few of us today aspire to these qualities either. 
Who wants to be vulnerable, dependent, without status among other people? Why would Jesus lift up these qualities so antithetical to being a competent, independent, successful, admired adult? The very qualities our society deems most honorable and worthy of aspiration. I can think of two or three key truths behind Jesus' words, though they aren't made explicit here. First, the kingdom of God does not revolve around me or you. The more we focus on ourselves, the less we focus on the true center, who is God, made human in Jesus. Second, we are each, in truth, more dependent and vulnerable than we like to admit. COVID reminds us of this. Even in 21st century America, humans are like glass, strong but fragile. Glass is durable and impervious until it is struck at just the right spot, then it shatters. It is good for us to remember we are dust and water not so superior as we like to think. Humility keeps us in touch with our impermanence, our unimportance, and our utter dependency upon God's unearned grace for every heartbeat, every breath. Third, embracing our own weakness gives us the empathy and compassion to embrace others in their weakness. If no one's superior, there is space for understanding, for human connection, for love, for transformation. I just finished reading a book about our new president, Joe Biden. One of his greatest assets as president, the most politically powerful office in the world, is his deep awareness of his own vulnerability, his personal losses and deep disappointments, his imperfections and failures. This awareness opens a great space for him to see and have compassion for others in their vulnerabilities, losses, and lapses. That capacity alone changes the arc of his leadership style to impact others in positive, life-giving ways. Bobby Brooking had the heart and soul of a child in the body of an adult. He lived without pretense, without guile, without cunning or cravenness. Bobby Brooking showed people how to be themselves, how to live with vulnerability and humility. He was a rare treasure to this community and he will be deeply missed. Would you bow with me for a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, in the adult world, we get often caught up in things that are not all that important to the kingdom of heaven. And yet we have these little missionaries among us called children who, if we pay attention, can teach us a whole lot about what it means to be Christians, what it means to be human, what it means to be a child of God, what Jesus means when he says, unless you become like a child and change, you'll never enter the kingdom of heaven. Thank you, Lord, for the children among us. May we treasure them as they deserve, not as little adults, but as children, which they are, and learn from them those things that we have forgotten as adults. Help us to treasure children in their uniqueness, in their vulnerability, in their dependency upon us to shape a world and a culture that they can grow into and build upon and thrive in and not experience tragedy and loss 
that is unnecessary. Help us, O God, to treasure our children and one another as we treasure you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. One to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace today and always. Amen. Amen.